Got it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, inventors and entrepreneurs. My name is Courtney Laskowitz. I'm the managing director here at Inventors Groups of America, and welcome to Inventors Online. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, is anyone new here to Inventors Online? If you are, go ahead and, and flash your hands in front of the screen. All right, okay, here we go. About good 10, uh, 15 people. Wonderful. All right. Well, welcome, welcome to your very first Inventors Online as a newbie here. Uh, of course, IGA was founded in 2017 by Stephen Key and Andrew Krauss. IGA's goal is to teach individuals how to best commercialize their product ideas, as well as strengthen and support inventor groups throughout the nation. We have a directory of local and regional inventors groups on our website, whom we meet with every month. And if you are located near one, we would highly encourage you to join. Of course, we'd love to hear your name and what state or country you are from. So go on over right now, open up that chat box and let us know your name and location. Of course, please do not disclose anything that is confidential and is not already publicly available. And of course, per usual, our meeting is being recorded and will be harnessed on our website and YouTube channel soon after. Courtney, right. you forgot the really cool thing about IGA. It's all that? free. That's right. There you go. Okay. <laughs> it is all free. Cool. Uh, of course, uh, please feel free to change your name in the participants panel. Choose to be in gallery mode uh, so you can see everyone. Uh, and though it is not required, we'd love for you to turn on your video. Of course, please type in your questions early into the chat box and we will do a quick Q&A session towards the end. Uh, and uh, with that said, today we will be diving into the land of prototypes. Of course, there are so many types, so many decisions to make, and just not enough education. Today, we'll be shedding some very important light on this topic, as well as do a live demonstration on what I would like to call a virtual Frankenstein. Now, before we get started, Stephen, would you like to mention anything? Well, yes, Courtney, I was waiting for the time where I could introduce you. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to welcome everybody uh, for tonight's event and online fireside chat, which <laughs> Courtney likes to mention all the time. I remember the first time um, I really got to know Courtney, and it was when she gave a speech, um, and that's been a couple years ago, and she gave a sp speech on creativity. And I have to say, I was so taken back by what she said about how important creativity was to her because I, I, it connected with me of, of why it's important to me. And I was sold. I thought Courtney has this magical thing that, that I think we all have, but she was able to share it and she was able to talk about it. And I was sold. And I'm really happy to, to know Courtney as a friend, but also as a colleague and associate. I'm really happy to see her tackle this world of inventing. And she does it with such gusto and she does it with such enthusiasm. And she knows how to get it done. In fact, she always surprises me on the skills that she has. And in fact, she makes me feel old all the time. <laughs> um, and she points that out to me all the time as well. That is true. So I'm really honored to, to, to have Courtney present tonight. And Courtney, thank you very much for doing this. Your skills are amazing. Your attitude's amazing. Your enthusiasm is amazing. You truly want to help each and every one of us. So I cannot thank you enough for being here tonight and giving this presentation. Thank you, Stephen. Really appreciate that. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's just jump into it and uh, go ahead and get started here. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. So how to make a virtual prototype that lands you a licensing deal. All right. So a little bit about me before we get started here. Uh, growing up, uh, I was homeschooled most of my education. Uh, I personally believe that it allowed me to focus on the things that I was passionate about. Uh, ever since I was six, I would make uh, uh, mini prototypes out of paper. 
Uh, I would break up little pieces of paper and I would make a little like furniture, some ski resorts and amusement parks, which if you stay to the end, you'll see a photo of what they were. Uh, and you'd always find me on the floor um, with paper and tape. Uh, and I've never showed this before, uh, but real briefly, I'm gonna go ahead and just share. Uh, this is a, uh, well, this was maybe when I was about seven or eight. Uh, this is a snowmobile uh, that I made out of uh, paper and tape and anything that I could find here. It's like a little place for luggage and there's an engine, super fascinated by just, again, you'd find me on the ground with just paper and, and tape. I'd make little animals, like here's like a hamster that I made. Again, you know, about seven, eight years old, super just, that's when I would spend my time. If other people were outside, you know, playing, you know, games, you'd find me on the floor with just ripped up, you know, pieces of uh, paper and tape all over the place. Uh, and I still do that today, uh, less on the floor, uh, but I'm more into tape uh these days. So I'm I, out of tape. I'm, I'm into jujitsu. So you can see there's two people fighting here and, uh, you probably can't see this super close, but I'm still in it today, you know, after, you know, 15 years later, it's still a passion of mine. Let me share my screen again. All right. Uh, and then uh, later I taught my family's nonprofit um, and they taught educational technology-based classes uh, to kids on topics such as robotics, animation, video game design, aeronautics, et cetera. Uh, later uh, in 2012, when I was 15, I won an NC WIT award for aspirations in computing in the Bay Area and was also a national runner up. Uh, I won it for, I was basically, a, I created and taught curriculum for an Android app design class um, uh, to kids using a program called MIT App Inventor for those of you who are familiar with the program. Uh, then later I started a jewelry business out of high school called Snappable. Uh, in 2015, I was the next year's inaugural youth division winner for entrepreneurship uh, from a speech I performed in my town in Santa Cruz. Uh, in 2016, I took the InventRight coaching program. Uh, when I was 22, I licensed four of my products to a company. And of course, now uh, I am the managing director of Inventors Groups of America, as well as an InventRight coach. And I would definitely call myself a serial product developer with every ounce of time that I have left working and focusing on my own inventions. Uh, I really personally believe that you don't need patents or expensive materials or a lot of money or even a degree uh, to pursue creativity and bring something in your mind into reality. So enough about me. Um, let's get into prototypes. So when and why do you need a prototype? Uh, you will always need some sort of visual representation, whether it's, you know, for your cell sheet or it's to talk about it and show someone you need something visual. This is usually a form of a prototype. Uh, proof of concept, really good reason to create something, whether it's homemade, you know, whether you outsource it, whether you use Fiverr, you know, 3D render, whatever it is, you want that proof of concept. The reason you want that is to see if it even works. Now it depends on the product, depends on the category. Uh, but the more you can test it to make sure that you have the absolute best design of your product, just creating something simple is creating what is called a proof of concept. So that's one reason why you might want to make some form of physical or virtual prototype. Again, market research, trial and error, the best design function, sell sheet. Uh, you can see there are two examples of sell sheets here. Uh, these both have virtual prototypes. You can see there's this beauty shot, this main image here, or these main images right here. These are both uh, examples of virtual prototypes on example cell sheets here. Uh, a good way to think of a cell sheet for those of you who are not familiar, of course, this is all talking about in the land of licensing here. Uh, you, it's a good way to think of cell sheets as a sales uh, person or package and you are basically, you know, the UPS driver and you're delivering that sell sheet to someone and you are running the other direction. You are not the salesperson. The sell sheet does the selling for you. Another way to think of it is your sell sheet is like your professional pitcher and you need some form of visual representation on that sell sheet. It is not professional to just have a bunch of words on your sell sheet. You need to show your product on there. So that's where prototypes, virtual or physical come in. Of course, a promo demo video, uh, if you have a physical prototype, that is very beneficial. A quick, you know, one minute video will help with selling uh, along with your sell sheet. 
And then if you must, uh, if you have to send, you know, some uh, prototype to a company, uh, then you will need some form of prototype, whether it's a looks like prototype or a works like prototype, which we'll get into in just a second. Uh, you will need something for that to send to a company. Uh, mindset, mindset shift. Okay. Uh, this might be a big one for a fair amount of you, but uh, as you guys can see here, uh, virtual prototypes, uh, homemade prototypes, what I'm going to get going to show you tonight, virtual Frankensteins, you need very little money. In fact, for the virtual Frankensteins, you need no money. Uh, you don't always have to outsource it to a firm and you don't always need and often don't need a physical prototype. If, if a company asks for you to send one, you often don't even need to send one. Usually it's just them trying to spark the conversation, trying to create engagement. They don't know how to move the conversation forward. So they're thinking, uh, do you have a prototype? And of course we want to say, of course, yes, let's, let's send it. Let's have, yeah, I have it, you know, whether you, you do or not. Uh, but you often don't need to. Uh, there's ways around that figuring out what they're really looking for. And then of course, virtual prototypes, which we'll get into right, here, right now, uh, are most used in our industry, industry being licensing. Types of prototypes. Now, these are the six most common ones with, and, you know, there's, there's hundreds of different types of prototypes. The top three are definitely the ones that are most used within our industry. And then the bottom three are there. And a lot of people believe the bottom three are the ones that you should be using. Uh, and again, within the industry, uh, not nearly as recommended as the top three. So really quickly, we'll just go through these DIY homemade fr Frankenstein prototype. Uh, these are, you know, materials you can find at a store. Uh, these are products you're buying online, cutting up, destroying, and making your own prototype based on, you know, the materials and objects that you find online. Uh, of course, you can make a works like or a looks like. Uh, prototype works like being that it functions properly the way you want it to and it looks like of course is what it would actually look like may not function this is an actual example of someone creating their own baby teether off of materials and then we have a virtual frankenstein which i'm going to demo and show you guys today on a pet product uh, and i made this one as well this is a uh, front view of a piggy bank alarm clock. Uh, you can't see the alarm on the side, of course. Uh, this is just from images online. Uh, piecing, yeah, again, images together. This is completely free. Uh, I do it on Google Slides and a program, uh, which is a website online called remove.bg. Y'all should be writing down remove.bg because it is a phenomenal, really simple program. You are just, it is removing backgrounds. BG meaning background. Your, your upload, which I'll show you, you'll upload an image. It removes the background and you throw it into Google Slides. We're talking really simple, no skills necessary or needed effortless uh, Photoshopping here. Uh, then we go down to the 3D model. Uh, there are lots of names for this here. Uh, 3D model, 3D render, virtual prototype. Again, this is most common within the licensing industry. Uh, you can outsource it pretty affordably uh, through Fiverr or Upwork. Uh, you can learn how to do these. Those are two programs you can see there, Tinker, Tinkercad and Dimension. Great programs, but I have to warn you, treat this as a new hobby. This is not just a simple, oh, I'll just get these programs, learn, you know, two, three hours, you know, maybe a week, maybe a month. Uh, these are some serious programs. If you are committed, uh, they are great programs, but please think of it as a hobby because you're going to spend countless, countless hours just learning the program before you even get into your product. Usually it's not worth it. It's usually way simpler to go ahead and just outsource that and have someone else make it extremely affordable these days for people who are pros. Then we go down to prototypes by a firm or outsource. This is uh, what a lot of people believe they need to do before doing anything. You need the patent and you need the prototype. Of course, we've talked a fair amount about patents uh, throughout IGA. Uh, this is often not the case that you need a full-blown prototype or sometimes even a sample. This image is actually a sample of a product that was going to be, or I guess is being uh, totally, completely developed through venturing. Uh, a sample is not a prototype. Usually a sample is in relation to the closest uh, example of what your product will be right before it goes into mass production. So it's 
almost basically exactly what your product is going to look like. It's going to be very expensive. You are going to outsource it and it's going to take a lot of your time. It'll probably stun you, or I, I guess maybe I should say stunt you in the process of licensing uh, because uh, the amount of money, the amount of time, uh, usually it's not worth it. A VP for, you know, 50 to 100, 150 bucks, extremely affordable, usually the best way to do it. CAD drawings are also fantastic. Uh, you can see these are both uh, automotive engines, the 3D model and the CAD drawing. Uh, they look pretty similar. You can see that the 3D model was rendered. This CAD drawing is not rendered and a majority of CAD software do not have rendering capabilities. Now, a lot of people are not familiar with this because there's a lot of CAD software out there that is free. And again, you know, you think, oh, I'll just buy, you know, I'll, I'll get AutoCAD or I'll get SolidWorks and I'll just mess with it and try to go ahead and make the, uh, you know, 3D uh, model. These do not render. These are not great for your uh, cell sheet. These are not going to look pretty. If you're going to go that far to do CAD drawings, definitely go ahead and just switch and do a virtual prototype. They're going to look so much better and way more lifelike. And then of course we have, you know, way more up and coming now, 3D printing, 3D pens. Uh, again, this is more of a new hobby. You're probably going to want to invest in two, three, four, five 3D printers. Uh, when I taught uh, classes at my parents' nonprofit, uh, I we had maybe five or six printers, they still do. And we had so many because they kept breaking. Uh, this is still new technology. Uh, and this is again, a hobby, same with CAD drawings, same with winning Autodesk uh, and Dimension. These are expensive, uh, time consuming uh, projects. So please utilize this as a long-term hobby. If this is what you wanna do, go ahead and be prepared to spend a good amount of time and money. If you don't really care about that per se and you just wanna get that visual representation, you really do wanna just focus on these top three here. All right, now we know kind of the average, you know, the most common uh, prototypes. Let's get into some examples of how they are used within cell sheets. Uh, these are some old, uh, not so great cell sheets and prototypes here. Uh, let's just take a second and, and soak in these uh, bad cell sheets. Yeah, so there's a lot of words. <laughs> uh, and the images aren't great. It's a little bit hard to figure out what exactly the product is. You can see on the left, we have a physical prototype. You can see in the middle, there is a small physical prototype here and then an image of a store. Uh, and then uh, you see here, these are scanned sketches. Someone took a highlighter and a, you know, Sharpie and outlined it. Again, not so great. It's pretty obvious what you're getting at here. Now we have good cell sheets and prototypes. Is the concept understood? They're good. They're not fantastic. They're okay. You can see again, uh, I, I made these three here. You can see this is a, a physical prototype here. Um, or I guess it would just be possibly a sample. Um, you can see these are Frankenstein. It, another way you could say is it's similar to Photoshop, but instead of starting with raw images of squares and triangles, you're taking images online and putting them together. And then of course, over here on the right is a sample and physical prototype. These are okay. You, you get the concept, it's understood. They're not fantastic. You don't look at these and say, wow, I want that, or wow, th this is cool. And then we have great cell sheets and virtual prototypes. Uh, this was actually the cell sheet on the left here that got me my very first licensing deal with my very first product, the one of the four. You can see there are two different things done here. There is a Frankenstein, which is this image here where it says one size fits all. And then we have the physical prototype, which you can see right here. You can see at the top here, this top left one and this top right one are really old uh, physical prototypes that I made. Uh, and obviously you can tell they're not good enough. They, you can't really understand what they are. So when you're creating these, if you're creating a physical prototype, you need to really question and uh, decide, is this good enough for a cell sheet? You know, maybe ask someone else. And if it's not, you need to back away and try something else. Of course, you have the second one here, 3D model or virtual prototype. And then of course on the right here, here is the uh, piggy bank alarm clock that I was alluding to earlier of uh, these two images being Frankenstein. 
All right. Now that we have some background here, let's go ahead and make uh, what I like to call a virtual Frankenstein. Again, this is very similar to Photoshop work, except uh, way simpler and you don't need Photoshop and you're using online images. So what if I said that you could just do this within Google Slides and remove.bg? What if I said I could edit it right now? I could show you within this very thing. In fact, let me go ahead and you can see a little bit more of my screen now. And you can see that I can actually edit all of this. So this is Google Slides free software. It's just like Google Docs, but it's, it's uh, like PowerPoint, um, but uh, on Google. Uh, this is online and we are going to make a dog product. So this is a product here. It's a tug of war dog toy. A dog can play with by itself. So I, you know, did my market research, I looked online, and there are lots of toys that you can find online that you can connect to something that your dog can play with. So my first thought is, bummer, this product is already out there, and I'm done. I got to come up with another idea. But instead of doing that, I can look at, you know, the whole entire marketplace and decide, is there something that's not out there within this same realm? And what I've come up with is a rope animal or toy at the end of it that you could interchange a way to switch out the toys uh, and then you can connect it to a bench or some object and then have a squeaker inside. So I'm like, all right, I know my point of difference. I'm good to go. Nothing out there is like this. And now I'm ready to create my virtual Frankenstein. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Um, basically the first thing is I'm going to find the various pieces for it. So I'm thinking, okay, I need some type of animal. So I'm going to go on Google images and I'm going to look around and see what I'm liking for, you know, a, a good example of it. Uh, again, if it doesn't end up being exactly what I want, uh, then I can use this as a blueprint to send to a virtual prototype person on Fiverr Upwork. So I could use this as a blueprint instead of actually using this on a cell sheet if it ends up not being good enough. Bring that down a little bit here. All right. And so I like these, but there is a there is a background on here. You guys can see that if I move this over, there is white. I can't do anything with this. I can't mash anything together here. So what I'm going to do is go to remove.bg. This is what it looks like. Pretty straightforward. I tried some other ones that didn't work too well, too small. And here they are right here. You can see the checkered board means that the background is removed. I click download and put them on my Google Slides. Now you can see I can move this over objects and the background is removed. This is the most amount of technical skills you need is to upload an image to remove.bg and throw it in. You can even drag it into Google Slides. You don't even need to download it. So I've already got my, uh, I'm guessing that's a cow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crop this cow to remove that pig. And now I'm thinking, okay, I need some rope attached to it. Uh, it needs to connect to like a bench or, or something. So what's my next thought uh, is I need some type of rope. So here I go again, looking at uh, different uh, rope materials. I found this one on Chewy. Looked good to me. I dragged it in and now I have this. I removed the background to it. And now I'm going to decide the color. I'm going to go ahead and pick this blue one here. You can also change the color within... Uh, Google Slides, if I wanted to get super creative, you can go into a format option section and say, I don't want blue. I want, you know, maybe this purple or whatever. So you can kind of go nuts there if you like. And then with that said, I don't want this ball. This is not my product. That's not what I want my product to look like. I'm going to go ahead and crop it again. Uh, but I want two ends to it. So I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to connect it to the end. Pretty simple here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, bam, already looks like a different product just from that cropping. Now I wanna connect them. Now I'm kind of developing my product as we're doing this. I'm thinking, how do those connect there? I need something. 
So my first thought is maybe a carabiner. So I'm going to go and find a carabiner. And I've already put it in here. I'm going to download it. Wait for that to download. I'm going to upload it in here. Bam, it's removed. I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller, stick it in. It's already starting to look like a real product here. These are connected. I'm thinking, well, if I can take this loop and put it through that other loop, then I can easily wrap it around something and I can connect it to a carabiner. So I've got those three parts there looking pretty good. Now I'm thinking, okay, I need a beauty shot and maybe it in use. I've got a dog here. I could maybe find a way to have the dog using it. I could rotate it. I could edit it more. Again, this is very, very basic. You can spend maybe another 30 minutes and make it slightly better, which of course I'd highly encourage you all to do. But already we're starting to come up with uh, what we want it to look like. And you can see here, I can go ahead and show you just with a little bit of Photoshop. You can see this cute little dog using my toy is connected to the bench. It's connected here. You can see that this image I just used, remove.bg, to remove some of the rope. So it looks like it's connected onto here. I just added in the whole product, the carabiner, the toy, the dog. Looks like it's real. This could be one of my shots on my cell sheet. And we have here, this could be the main beauty shot. If I wanted to use that and maybe, you know, show different variations, then I can go ahead and take that uh, pig that I had and we can go ahead and swap it out. So you can see as you start to gain these skills, it's pretty easy to do some quick, you know, Frankensteining work to make it look like a real product here. This, I mean, these are real objects and that is the beautiful thing about virtual Frankensteins. These are not random shapes. In a way, these are rendered. You know how we were talking about CAD drawings versus renderings? The CAD drawings don't look like they're rendered. They don't look like real products. These are actually real products. This is a real dog. This is real rope. This is a real carabiner. And so just by doing this, it already looks like a product shot. You could see this on a, um, a website of how it's being used. One thing I would like to mention is you see in uh, the product of all the things that I wanted it to have, it has rope, it has an animal on it, a way to switch out the toys with the carabiner, connect it to an object like a bench, and then have a squeaker inside. So this is where you really have to think about your product. If I stick a squeaker inside this little cow, you wouldn't be able to see it if I thought, oh, I'll find an image of a squeaker. I'll put it in there. And then you realize, oh, wait, the squeaker goes inside. So you wouldn't actually show the squeaker like out of its you know, stomach because you wouldn't see that in real life, which is why you have to be really honest with yourself and decide what do you want it to look like? How can I make it portray what I want without having like the squeaker on the outside of the product? Because you do want it to be on the inside. So that is why uh, cell sheets are very important to say things like this. You can use words. There is no squeaker. You can't tell that there is a squeaker or part of this product at all. But you can see just by using, you know, squeak, squeak, it already uh, portrays it. So that's just an example of uh, a virtual Frankenstein. Uh, pretty simple to do. Uh, you can spend as much or as little time as you want with it. Uh, this is, again, if you can make it look pretty close to the main product, I highly encourage you to try a virtual Frankenstein first before you do anything in relation to prototypes. If you make it and you're looking at the result and you're thinking, man, like, I like this, but I didn't want it to be a cow. You know, maybe I like that design, that texture, but I want it to be a horse. And you look online, you're searching and searching, and you don't see anything that looks similar to what you are trying to find. This is a beautiful way to be able to send what you have here and be able to say to a Fiverr Upwork uh, designer and say, I want something that looks like this. Notice that this is a cow. I would like this same design as a horse. Now you're giving them a blueprint. You're giving them exactly the textures, the colors that you're looking for. Instead of just saying, I would like a dog toy that has rope at the end, that has a carabiner and has a cow. Now you're being descriptive 
to a designer. Designers are very visual people. So you want to make sure you can provide them with everything you possibly can to help them be successful and not spend so much time and energy and money in a place where you could just quickly Photoshop something like this, make a virtual Frankenstein. And if it's good enough, you're good to go with your cell sheet. If it's not good enough, you can use them as instructions for a uh, graphic designer or a 3D uh, renderer, or you can potentially, now that you have the materials, you could buy these. Now that you know what you want it to look like, you can buy this product that we found. You can buy this toy. You can buy a carabiner. You can mess with it. Make sure that's how you really want it to work. It's all about that proof of concept. So this is a, a journey that you will go through. This is not just a prototype. This is figuring out the best design and function for your product. Now, one thing I'd like to show you guys uh, on remove.bg is different things you can do for um, uh, on this software. You can see this is, you can go back to the original. You can click where remove the background. You can click edit. Oh, here, let me go to uh, this one here. Oh, that's not working either. All right, well, let me just find another one here. Let's see this, this little doggy here. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna grab it and drag it into remove.bg. And it already removed it, it is that quick. I mean, this is very simple work. So if you're thinking here, man, I don't know anything about any of these programs. All you're doing is dragging it in and it already removed the background for you. You click edit, you have more options if you're like, all right, I got this level one complete. Now level two, how can I learn more about this remove.bg stuff? There are lots of things you can do here. You can see you can add a background, which for the most part probably won't be relevant for us as product developers, unless you want it to be in something cute like that, like grass. You can see there's options for blurring. So now we're taking Google Slides uh, editing into uh, remove.bg. You can erase more of the image if you want to. So instead of, let me remove this grass here. If you're like, I like this, but it needs to connect to something. So some of that rope needs to go away. You can change the brush size. You can click erase. And then you can easily connect it to something. You click download, you bring it back in, do a Google Slides document. And again, you are sliding into here. Now you have it with the rope half on. And just by doing that and resizing it, you can already make it look like it is potentially uh, connected onto something. Now it looks like that might be the wrong direction. So you could always do things like flip, you can rotate things. Again, very simple software to be able to, to do this here. Uh, and then already you can start to, you know, crop it on here if you wanted to. You can do all sorts of different things uh, with it that way, but that's just a, a, another way to do it. Instead of Google Slides, you can use remove.bg. Uh, so with that said, again, real simple, a virtual Frankenstein. We accomplished what our goal was, which was this product. We did not show the, the squeaker in it because we did not want to show it inside itself. Uh, we have the squeak squeak on here, which could be, you know, this could be the beauty shot on your cell sheet. And then you have a beautiful image of the product in action with the dog holding your product. And then really quickly, some final quick tips for you guys. Uh, try seeing if you can make a quick prototype with materials and other products for that proof of concept. So if you guys are like, great, I did my market research. Now what the heck am I supposed to do? What, what do I do now? Prototype is what you want to do next. You want to get that proof of concept. Try that virtual Frankenstein. You just need Google Slides and you need remove.bg. These are the only two things you need to just attempt to see what you want it to look like. Use that trial and error. Use it to figure out that best design, that best function. So you're not spending thousands of dollars on a prototype that you outsource and then realize it's not the design you wanted at all. You wanted it to be a horse instead of a cow and you have to spend more money working on that. Instead, just try it here see what happens. And then if you like it, but it's not good enough for you, go ahead and make a virtual prototype. Have a designer use what you made and have them make it. 
And then you can decide if you want to make a homemade one for a video, if you do want to outsource it, if you want CAD drawings as well. Uh, and then of course, of course, like I said, when in doubt, try virtual Frankenstein at, at first, and then don't spend too much time or, or uh, money on this. Prototypes are a really big area for people to just sit and decide what they want to do. And then there's no movement for months or years in any type of prototype education you hear that's on a, a, a virtual or physical your location. You're thinking, all right, I gotta get more information. I gotta go to that event. And then you're spending two, three years in the same place with your invention, still stuck on prototypes. Do not let prototypes stunt you. Think of this as hot coals. You want this to be good. You want it to be a great visual representation for your cell sheet or for a demo video, but don't spend so much time on it where it is truly stunning you. Keep moving forward. This is one step of the process of the whole entire, you know, licensing, you know, concept. Use this, understand it, decide what you want to do with the various prototypes and try it. Try a couple of them. Try a virtual Frankenstein. You know, try a homemade one, try materials. And then when in doubt, if you can't go for that virtual prototype, just know who you're working with. And again, if you're working with, you know, outsourced Fiverr or Upwork, make sure you go ahead and, uh, you know, do some due diligence, check out their portfolio. You may have to end up, you know, trying two or three designers until you find someone you really like. Uh, I like to instill in my own products the one month rule. And that is I have one month to make a decision and have a beautiful prototype, whether it's a homemade one, whether it's a virtual prototype, whether it's a Frankenstein. If I do not have something that I like within one month, then I need to redecide what the heck I'm doing with uh, my uh, inventing prowess. One month is too long. Of course, it depends on the product. It depends on the industry. There may be a point where you do need a sample you do need a physical prototype and a really nice one. And of course that one month rule cannot apply to those. Uh, so with that said, you guys can see a couple of uh, prototypes that are, or, you know, the amusement park that I made when I was young. I have a, a robot collection um, as well. And these are just a couple of some of the things that uh, I made when I was younger. Definitely uh, go ahead and try using remove.bg. Uh, try making, you know, a a little uh, prototype like this, mess around with it. Let us know how it works. You know, let us know if, if, if you like it or if you're like, man, like I want to go back to, you know, virtual prototypes and, and homemade ones. Like this is nuts. You know, this is some really new stuff. Just using Google Slides, an online program to do your own, uh, you know, image editing, uh, pretty basic stuff. And you can have quite a lot of fun with it as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for that. And we can go ahead and uh, if there are any questions, we can uh, jump into that. I pulled a few questions, Courtney. But so this is incredibly expensive, isn't it? Google Slides is expensive, <laughs> isn't it? It is free. It is oh, completely wait a minute. free. And then how about remove.bg? Is that expensive too? It is also free. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Because we had a bunch of people asking, what program is she using? And I'm like, I don't know. She said it like five times. But so <laughs> Google Slides and remove.bg, and they're both completely free. And that is and it all you need. Like the stuff you were doing, that's not CAD. That's not rendering like these complicated programs. That's simple stuff. Right. And it looks You're rendered. Right. That's what's so great about this. This is not a drawing. This is this is not a sketch. This is not, you know, a CAD drawing. These are real products that you are photoshopping together. And you saw the dog is real. It's like you found this dog. You didn't hire a dog to play with your product. You photoshopped it in there and he looks like he's having a ball. He loves that product. And that real dog has never seen your real product in real life. So it's kind of a win-win-win. You know what I really love about this? Um, it's a great way to test, right? And I think the best way to be um, a profitable and successful inventor is to be able to test your ideas quickly. If you spend a lot of time on prototypes, and you don't know, and I know I love building prototypes. I know everybody does. And we, we want to polish them up. And I'm sure we're looking at them and we just love them. But you really, when, when you really want to be successful at this, you really want to take those ideas and test those as fast as you can. And this is so fast um, that it's remarkable, Courtney. I really like what you're doing here. I haven't seen this before. I know you've been teaching this. I like it because they're real products 
And, and if I wanted to build a prototype, I could go down and cannibalize those products and build it myself to show how it actually works. Absolutely. Even more. So I think this is brilliant. I think it's fast. I think it's easy to, for anybody to do. And especially if you're going to work with a designer, show them kind of what your vision is. So what a great tool. And it's done so quick. So congratulations. I love it. Absolutely. It really is a game changer. I mean, back in, you know, maybe 10 years within the whole inventing community, it really was, you have to hire a firm. That's the first thing you do. You do your market research. Now I got to do a prototype. I got to hire someone. I got to spend, I got to have, you know, three to $7,000. I got to, you know, fundraise this. I got to make sure I have this money. And then I got to go do that. And for some products, you do need to do that. There are some medical products, some, you know, uh, products that have a lot of mechanical aspects of it. And you may have to go ahead and make sure it works. It is like you said, Stephen, it's all about that proof of concept. Yeah. But a lot of the time, a very large amount of uh, majority of products, you don't need to do that. You don't need to hire a firm. You often don't even need, you know, a, well, a homemade yeah. product. But, but you know, what's really great. If you showed it to a company and the benefit was strong enough, and they say, we want a prototype, then you go build one or make one Absolutely. or hire somebody. But it's not if you should do when it. When you it's have when, interest. It's when you should do it. That's the, <laughs> part of the game longer. Courtney, let's open it up for questions because I think- Yeah, sure. I got, I got some questions here, but you know, Courtney, what I want to say about that is I, I can't tell you how many times I've had, heard inventors say, I don't know how to draw. And they, they just feel lost. And what you just showed them, somebody could not know how to draw Anybody can find images, drag those, manipulate them. So for all these, you know, well, I don't know how to draw, so I don't know how to do this. So I guess I need to go out and hire a prototyper for five grand. No, you don't. <clears throat> and, you know, if you're having vendors do the work, you can relay what the product is. Yes, it might right. be crude, but then they can make it better. And so it can be a tool. Some of you, I guess you could use it sometimes, Courtney, just as the product you're showing. Um, and other times just to relay to a designer to make exactly. it better, you know. Um, so Desiree said, hi, Courtney, with the quality of 3D virtual prototypes, do you think it's necessary to create physical uh, prototypes? Well, I would say it definitely depends on, again, the product and the category, just point blank. I, I don't want to give something, you know, totally just, you know, again, I'd say for the majority, I would say that virtual prototypes almost always uh, stump uh, physical prototypes. If you can make one like in your home, like find some materials and test that. Cause I believe at least as an inventor, when I come up with a concept, it's the best concept. I have the best way to do it. This is the solution. And I don't need to test it. Like I don't need to buy like $20 worth of stuff. I don't need to go to the dollar store and spend, you know, five bucks and, and, you know, make it work. But when I do that, it just changes the design of it. And that's why I want to say that this is more of a journey of, I think this is, you know, I'm sure everyone here believes that the first concept they have is this is the best function and design of it. But as soon as you start getting into that mode of, let me try buying some stuff. Let me try Frankensteining it and seeing what it looks like. More often than not, it looks totally different than you never would have imagined. So I would like to answer that question in a way of if you can make a proof of concept, if you can go to a store and, you know, Frankenstein, you know, I was doing a virtual Frankenstein. This would be a physical Frankenstein where you're buying objects and cutting them up or getting pieces of paper or finding materials and doing it. If you can do it, let's say under 50 bucks for the most common, you know, product, I would say absolutely go ahead and do it. But you can also do a virtual Frankenstein as well. It's more about the journey of making sure it is the best design. It is the best function because you are upholding, you know, everyone's going to use your product. You would hope you want the absolute best. You want it to succeed. You could get a licensing deal and not sell anything because people are not connecting with it. It's not relatable. So it's more about the journey of making sure you can put yourself in that mode to be able to have the best version, whether it is a virtual Frankenstein or it does end up being a physical prototype. You have time for a few more questions, Courtney, from folks? Absolutely. Um, Gabriel said, and I know since you're an event right coach too, in addition to BIGA, the managing director, you'll be able to answer this one, no problem. It's kind of prototype related. Um, I have prototype and samples, but I think my main challenge is convincing potential licensees that my product will sell. When I don't have any sales myself, only a sell sheet and a patent pending, should I just sell my product myself and look to get a licensing deal as secondary? So I know you're going to have an answer for that. 
Uh, yes, uh, for starters, uh, there's a lot of different things that you can start figuring out where you are falling off. Is it the scripts? Is it the, you know, prototype you're showing? Is it the sell sheets? Uh, usually, uh, the more I've had various people message me about they are stuck, uh, it is because of the very long script that they're sending to companies. We're talking paragraphs to companies, and you're, uh, people who do that are starting to alienate these companies. Uh, and that, of course, shows true to the whole entire product development community. Uh, and so, no, I would totally recommend- I, Absolutely, but I don't think you're Alliance getting, meeting. I think what, what they're really saying is, I only have a sell sheet and a patent pending. I don't think that I can convince companies to buy my idea with that. So I can't license they, they, if he hasn't sold any. Why, why would somebody listen to me if I haven't sold any? So you have, you have personally have had students you've guided that have licensed up. They've never sold one, right? Well, yeah. I mean, a, a very large majority of my students are focused on licensing. Venturing is not even something that they're considering. But, but, they have no sales and yeah, they but, get licensing deals. Yeah, I would. Yeah, let me jump in real quick. Because that's really a great question. No one knows for sure if your product will sell or not. It doesn't matter who they are or what company it is. Uh, the only way to really test it is to make it, put it on the shelf and see if people buy it. Now, doing that gets really expensive. We, the most licensed, well, we see things that get licensed every single day and there's no sales. There's no data. No one made it. No one started a business. Companies like it. They took a chance. Most of these companies know their, their customers' needs. And if, you're, if your sell sheet has a very strong benefit that's big enough compared to similar products, they will take that chance. They will take that risk to, to test it. So you don't have to do it yourself. Now, that being said, let's say you have an idea, you've been shopping around and everybody is just risk averse. No, 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 no. You just keep, and so you're like, well, how do I take away some risk? Because that's what's stopping them. What you might want to consider is create some type of market demand. Show them that a buyer wants this. Maybe show it to a buyer, a regional buyer, a local buyer, maybe, maybe a national chain, but show them, connect with LinkedIn, and say, hey, what do you think of my product? Would you purchase it? And if you can get a retailer saying, hey, I love this, that's enough to take away some risk. And there's other ways to take away that risk. I love that question because no one knows for sure. Business is a risk. P.S. just makes a comment here. I just used remove.bg for multiple files while listening, and it works great. It didn't. It did ask halfway through if I was a human and asked to validate through the <laughs> captcha val validation. But uh, yeah. So wow, PS is on top of it. It's like you, Courtney. You're just like Fantastic. so driven. You get on top of stuff. That's great. How you get stuff um, done? Nick said this is a very smart way of presenting your ideas. Awesome. You're the best, Courtney. Oh, and I want to remind you, if you guys could type in your thanks for Courtney now, because um, we're going to wind up in ten minutes or so. Um, Guys, Courtney, I just feel old. You know, you showed me something new tonight. You showed me how to speed up the process. You, you brought technology to all of us and you made it really simple. So thank you very much for doing that because it's all about being current, right? It's all about doing, you know, using some of the tools that are available. And you showed some really simple tools tonight. So thank he you. He was lucky much. though. He, he has a, a guy named James that's been doing his design for 25 years. So you just go, James, this is what I need. And he's like, okay. And he does it. No, but I you think guys James, don't have a James. I think James should have been on here tonight because I don't think he does those virtual proto Frankenstein prototypes for me. He's still doing the hard, the hard way. So that yeah, was funny. You know, honestly, when you become that serial inventor, when you are passionate enough to figure out where you're spending so much time, you start to figure out all these different ways of how you can speed it up. I mean, I go through the process with myself within coming up with the concept to pitching it within two hours. I'm thinking of the idea. I'm making that virtual prototype. I'm going through that whole process and pitching it within those two hours. It took me six months every single time I had an idea, six months per product. And I thought, this is ridiculous. If it's going to take me six months to go through one product and I've got, you know, hundreds of products I want to get out there, this isn't for me. So instead of giving up and well, saying I'm now, done, Courtney, it's about I, speeding it up. I remember when we had that conversation a long time ago. I do too. Said, Look, Steve, you've got to tell me how to fix this because this is taking me way too long. And you found another way from that conversation we had. I'm really glad you're mm -hmm. getting there because at the end of the day, 
you have to become an idea factory. It's a numbers game. And if you're working on one idea and spending a lot of money on this one idea and it doesn't work, you probably won't do it again. True. Scares you off of it. I mean, you think you're thinking patents, you're thinking prototypes and you're thinking I am gone. And so how do you, how do you combat those? And this is just one way within the prototype sphere sphere to be able to combat that. Now, this is one that I think a lot of people are are asking and I'll, I'll answer this one. Um, Trish said, Thanks for the great job, Courtney. I would like to ask if I made a virtual Frankenstein and used it in a cell sheet, would I need to state on the cell sheet about the pics and images used from Google to avoid any copyright issues? Do I need to say anything at all about it? So given what you're sharing with people, that is a great question, Trish. So there is something called fair use. And But before I even talk about fair use, let's talk about the giant difference between two different things. When you're licensing and you're going to email it privately to, let's say, 30 different marketing managers at 30 different companies, whole different ballgame than putting it up on your website. Okay. So that's somebody's dog toy. You put it up on your website. Now you're hacking together their dog toy. If you changed it enough from an artistic standpoint, it might be okay, but but I'm saying no. Um, But if when you're privately showing something for license and you say, all, all artwork and trademarks are the rights of their respective owners for illustrative purposes only. And you put Disclaimer. that down, small type at the bottom. It's called fair use. You guys can go on Wikipedia and look it up. I'm not sharing legal advice with you guys, but y- you're not going to get in trouble for that. You know, That's and a great question. But again, you're privately sharing it via an email with one person. You're putting the disclaimer in there. This is for illustrative purposes only. You could even... For in that respect, if it's just private to a potential licensee via email, you could put logos on there, NFL, whatever. You're just showing them what's possible. You're not. Now, I had a student once that I didn't know he did this. He had a whole website, had NFL logos all over it. And he called me. He didn't tell me at a website. He's trying to license. And he called me up one day and said, Andrew, the NFL called me. They're going to they're, they're gonna sue me. I'm like, what do you, why? And he's like, They told me I got to take this down like right away. I'm like, take it down. Like, what the hell are you thinking? So there's a really crazy story to illustrate. Don't put other people's products or logos for teams and stuff on publicly. Privately, disclaimer, fair use, look it up. And I think that was a really great question, Trish, because some people might have been worried worried about that. I'll never never forget. I was at a trade show and I had these samples and there were prototypes and there were Coke and Pepsi logos all over it. And the Coke people walked by. <laughs> they just, they kind of looked at him and smiled and they walked on. Because <laughs> it was, they knew it was just a sample. They knew it was fair use. It wasn't production. It wasn't selling it. But was I worried a little bit? Yeah, but they didn't care. Yeah. Courtney, the floor is yours. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, are we good with, with questions? And that's uh, all I basically I, have I, for today. I think we are. I think I'd like to give uh, Courtney a round of applause and mute and mute everybody. You can applaud, sure. scream, what? whatever. Then I'll mute you again, and then we can take a screenshot. Let me see. Hold on, guys. Well, Courtney, you know how to unmute. Could you do you that? Got it. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be all right. Here we go. Is it unmuted? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, Courtney. Hey. 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 I, I have to say one thing. Thank you. We had the second. I I believe we had the second or, or the third largest attendance tonight. Courtney, you did it. You pulled it off. Great crowd. Congratulations, everybody. Please make sure to share. You know. IGA with anybody you know that wants to be creative, that think that wants to get involved, please share the site. And Courtney, great job. Uh, and I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. Wow, what a group. Fantastic. Yeah, this was absolutely phenomenal. And with that said, we'd love to all, per usual, take our family photo. Uh, if Andrew, you want to go ahead? Oh, and God. Yeah, some, yeah, the uh, regular way of doing it. So I got to do this one at a time. So it's like, yep. you don't know what screen you're on. So let's just give, you're going to do this for a little bit here put up your hand or give a thumbs up or smile or whatever. So we're going to do one screen at a time. Here we go. Yeah. Two, three, capture. And now we're going to do it again for the next screen because we've got to have a lot of screens. 
Okay, screen two. Sorry, it's so clunky, guys. We will figure this out. There's what, 50 screens? Wait a minute. How yeah, okay. no. hey. One, I'll tell you when to do it again so you guys' thumbs don't get sore. Oh, hold on. This is everyone's exercise for the day. Steven's going to give me a hard time. The, the control shift three wasn't working for some reason. Okay, one more time. Here we go. All right. Okay. So that's screen two. It's going to get to a point where a lot of people aren't on video. So we're going to do it one more time. We're going to do it another time. This is one more time here. Okay. You ready? Set, go. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah. All right. And let me see. A lot, of, a lot of you are in video. That's really cool. Okay. One last screen. The last time. Last time, I promise. Look at the whole family. There you go. Montana, oh. the whole family. Yeah. Here, here, here we go. Yeah. All right. There we go. We did it. Wonderful. <laughs> One thing I'd love to say um, is if anyone would like to see a future Inventors Online where we continue the process with this product, this dog product, and go into the marketing copy and sell sheet of this product, definitely let us know, message us, email us, put it in the comments here. If this is something that you like, you like this kind of style, you learn a little bit, do a workshop, maybe with marketing copy or a sell sheet or any other topic, let us know. We are here for you. So any kind of feedback or, or you know, questions you can give us, we would absolutely love to include everything um, that we possibly can to help you guys out. Uh, so with that said, Andrew, Stephen, would you guys like to say anything uh, before we close here? Courtney, you did it again. You're always surprising me. And uh, thank you for doing such a great job. You, you did an amazing job, Courtney. It was great. You had me engaged the whole time. And I've, I've, you've already showed me all this stuff. And I was like, I was really into it. I know everybody else was. Very empowering. If I had to put one word to what you did, you just empowered a whole bunch of people that said they couldn't draw, said they, they get, they're getting it. It's in their head. They don't know how to get it out. You just empowered a whole bunch of people. So thank you. Absolutely. And anything that I can do for empowering, I am absolutely all for it. You, you're now putting, you know, all the hard work into your own hands with just, you know, Google Slides and remove.bg. Pretty simple stuff. So of course, everyone, thank you so much for coming. Our next event is coming up uh, in September. That is September 29th. So go ahead and pencil that date in to your calendar. And of course, uh, this uh, meeting will be up in just a couple hours on our YouTube channel, as well as our website. So please go ahead and share away, go nuts, uh, spread it with the world. And then uh, real quickly, Stephen, we do have a uh, inventor's um, uh, local inventors group, uh, five groups that we'd like to share. Do you want to briefly explain what inventors groups are as I bring it up? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Courtney, for, for, for reminding me and everybody else. Um, the local inventors clubs, they're all around the country. Please join. In fact, you're, you're seeing a few people here that are part of IGA. It's so important to support your local inventors group. You're going to meet like-minded people that can help you. You're going to meet attorneys and people that build prototypes. It's so important to be part of your community. And I cannot thank the local group so much for their support. So thank you, Courtney. Wonderful. And Courtney, we, there's, there's uh, IGA groups across the country. So that's just a sampling of a few, right? Exactly. That's just five of them. There's quite a few out there. You can see them all on our website. We've got a, uh, a graphic that shows them all, all across the nation. And then also contact information if you want to get a hold of them. Oh as well. Mm -hmm. One last thing I want to mention, everybody, September 15th, mark it down, please join. Oh, it's inventors supporting inventors. We have 15 inventors coming on Zoom breakout rooms. Courtney is going to be there. All these very successful inventors are going to have private rooms where you get to meet them. I think it's too important. I think it's very important. It's what you know and who you know. These inventors know what they're doing make connections, build relationships, September 15th, find it, join us. I think you're going to love it. And that's inventors supporting inventors. And that's free. So how do they find out about that, Stephen? You want to have them drop, drop us an email or? Yeah, we're, um, you can find it online, LinkedIn. Everybody's following me on LinkedIn. If you're not connected with link with me on LinkedIn, please do because a lot of stuff we post on there. You can also find it. Where else, Andrew? I'm not even sure where you can find that. Uh, we'll it, what we'll do, we'll send it out in the email on IGA. Courtney, send it sure, out. Sure, you got everybody. it. Okay, yeah, I that's think easy then. If, if, so basically, just go to inventleader.org. Make sure you're subscribed to the, the newsletter there. 
yep. and then you'll, you'll get the notice. So that's the best way to go. Yeah. And there's we'll the link every- in the comments as well. So if everyone who's here, if you guys want to quickly take a look and, and copy that link, it is there as well. But we'll, of course, also put it in our emails for you guys to peruse on your own time. And it's free. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for coming. Really appreciate y'all joining us today and learning about prototypes, virtual prototypes, and virtual Frankensteins. Uh, We really appreciate it. And of course, per usual, we hope to see you all in our very next meeting in September so we can bring you more expert information in the areas you need help in. Thanks again, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend. See everybody. Bye, everybody.